Hello everyone, it's me, Abhishek Thapa. I'm back with another new, new video, which is the part two of previous video on stock market prediction and forecasting using stacked LSTM. In previous video, I have already gone through step uh, one to step five. So if you don't have watched that video, please go through the video before watching this video so that you will get the clear understanding in the flow of our project. For watching that video, the video the link will be in uh, description or you can also check check out my channel in step number six preparing the train and the test assets now the main idea begins here for handling the normal data sets we normally split the data sets using the train test split or cross validation approach but for time series data sets the approach will be different in our previous tasks that is the iris classification we use the train test split because uh, that data sets were not the time series data sets so for handling the time series data sets we will split it manually in such a way that the train data sets must have the oldest data than that of the test data sets initially we have loaded our data set tf by emphasizing the date attribute of our data sets using the past date parameters and passing the date attribute its edges value uh, so that our date attribute will be converted into the python date time data type and we can also implement various methods and attributes of python date time data type for the analysis of our data and after that i for univariate analysis i have uh, just taken the uh, close uh, column or close attribute uh, um, attribute for the prediction of the closing price in upcoming days or in future days so that is the univariate analysis and after that i uh, uh, that uh, i have prepared the close df so that the close df is prepared um, just considering the uh, close attribute of our uh, data sets df then i have sorted our data set um, in ascending order by date so that the uh, so that the head of our data set will contain the oldest data from the day 2010 and uh, the tail end of our data set will contain the newest data sets to 2018 so uh, so that it will be easier uh, while uh, while preparing the train and the test data sets now we consider the initial 70 percent of our our uh, closed data set closed df data frame is a test uh, train data since the closed data is a uh, closed data frame is of the two dimensional we can uh, slice it in uh, slice it by row this is the first one is slicing from the zero index to the train size um, value and the second slicing is column here the column is kept unsliced similarly for the test data set after that we gone through the shape look it is converted into the two dimensional form uh, that is it consists of a uh, one uh, column and the 611 row vector row values now we can say that the trend and the trend data and the test data is in the column matrix form since there is only one column so it is a column matrix now we can also check out uh, first uh, 10 values of the test data which is in this form now uh, the type of the test data is NDRA, NumPy NDRA now for fitting and testing of our LSTM model we need to prepare our data sets also for uh, any time series data sets that is for univariate approach we use this approach for preparing our uh, train data and the test data sets uh, suppose uh, our train data uh, our closing price for the uh, last 10 days was this and, and uh, 122 consider as a, a day one closing price value and day two closing price uh, is 124 in this way and the two days uh, closing price is 300 now we need to predict the 
tomorrow's value so that um, we need to consider uh, the previous some values in order to predict that closing price value of tomorrow now suppose this is our data sets we prepare our trend data like this taking considering some uh, percentage of a uh, value up to 193 we will consider is it is a trend data and the after that we consider as test data like this we have done already and after doing this we need to prepare our data set and there is a uh, the uh, keyword uh, keyword or uh, there is a named as a parameter named as the time steps here the time steps is equal to 3 I took the time step as a value 3 for this example this means that by using the past three values in order to predict the 167 our model will use or will be trained in such a way that it will take the previous past or past three values in order to predict the 167 this value so that the, this is the meaning of our time steps by using the past three values we need to calculate the present value look so our first tuple will be the 122 124 135 and will predict the 167 which is the y that is the target value target attribute and uh, for the for predicting the for training for the 187 uh, our uh, data set will be next data set will be the 124 135 167 and 187 in this way our train and the test uh, data sets will be prepared and this function will uh, uh, will uh, accomplish this approach you can go through this now uh, we consider uh, in this example we consider our time step is 3 but for uh, our uh, large data sets we need to consider uh, large value of the time steps so I consider here the 100 that is by cons uh, by using the past 100 values we need to calculate the present closing pri closing price value that is the univariate analysis now it is reshaping into this form you can already see I already explained this and uh, our function will return the two values that is x data and the y data as a non pair and first value will be stored in the x train and the second value will be in the y train similarly for the x train y test uh, uh, we call the create data set by passing the test data and the time step as a parameter and the this function will return the uh, yax data in yax test and the y uh, data in the y test and uh, the shape of the uh, x train can be seen as the one three two three and 100 100 because we still uh, we use the time steps 100 so our column will be the the number of columns will be the 100 in our uh, prepared data sets now another another concept comes here for uh, for you using the lstm we need to receive our input which is in two dimensional form into the three dimensional form so that our lstm LSTM will mm, uh, so that our data set will be converted into the required form mm, or appropriate form required for the LSTM model. Here you can see that the Yox train shape index one value shape index one value this one is equal to the total number of rows in the action because it is the second uh, mm, value in the two dimensional second uh, index value in the uh, two dimensional. Mm, so this will be the uh, equal to the total number of the columns and also equal to the time step and we consider the time step is 100 this is the just a simple understanding and so changing the shape into the 3d form of uh, we convert the 3d form is uh, first uh, uh, first value will be the total number of couples or the data in our data set then second value will be the features number of features and the third value is uh, is con usually considered as one look for x train we pass we receive it into the x train shape zero that is the number of data and x train shape one that is the uh, number of features and the by default one and for uh, x test we receive it into the x test shape zero x test shape one and one 
in this form. Uh, this is the uh, main idea you need to uh, have this idea before uh, model fitting uh, to our constructed stack LSTM now in step number seven uh, we construct our stacked LSTM model for constructing our stacked LSTM model we uh, uh, set up a tensor flow environment in our environment uh, folder so that we can have access to the uh, TensorFlow library. In uh, modern TensorFlow, uh, the Keras library will be uh, already embedded in the TensorFlow. So we can use the TensorFlow.Keras.Models to import the sequential and we can also import the dense and the LSTM layers for constructing our neural network. Uh, now, the first uh, layer, that is the LSTM layer, contains the 15 number of neurons, uh, and the first layer will be the input layer, and the second layer will, be, and the last layer will be that is the dense layer will be the our output layer, with only one neuron, and the uh, middle layers, these two layers are our hidden layers. Uh, there are two hidden layers uh, for in our constructed LSTM model, our neural network. Uh, uh, and each contains the 50 number of neurons and the return sequence equal to tree true now here the return sequence equal to true means that uh, uh, it, it uh, accepts the uh, boolean value and uh, by default the return sequence is set to false in Keras RNN layers and this means that the RNN layer will only return the last hidden state output otherwise it will return the uh, full sequence you can see and uh, we give the input shape as the time step comma one we usually give the our uh, values of uh, this number of features and the one and this set uh, two uh, values is our parameter in the input shape value this one because time step equal to 100 and your strength shape one is equal to also equal to 100 100 so you can see this is this both are equivalent and uh, we uh, use the optimizer atom uh, so that why we use atom optimizer the results of the atom optimizer are generally better than every other optimization algorithms and it have it has faster computation time as well as and also requires a few parameters for tuning purpose now you can see the number of params and here we finally uh, fit our uh, model uh, passing the x train y train and validation data is x test and y test number of equals is equal to 100 and batch size can be usually better when uh, value is, uh, batch size value is 32 but i consider 64 uh, for illustration just for just for demonstration and bar was equal to one um, here it was means the number of times that the learning algorithm will work through the entire training data batch size is equal to the number of um, uh, samples processed before the model is updated and bar was the choice that uh, how you want to see the output of your neural network while it's training if you set the bar was equal to zero it will show nothing so i keep the bar was one so this progress will be uh, shown in shown as an output if you skip it zero it will be it will be uh, not shown now this was the um, illustration of uh, this uh, line this code of line now we jump into the step number eight that is the evaluation of our constructed lstm model now we ev uh, evaluate uh, in this step we evaluate our constructed lstm model how uh, its uh, loss function is varying how it is how it is actually predicting how accurately it is actually predicting uh, the closing price uh, and so on uh, now we plot the loss graph so you can see that the loss initially the loss will be the very high and after um, uh, each iteration number of iteration the loss is going very exponentially decreasing so uh, from above graph uh, shows that the loss has decreased significantly with the increase in the number of iteration thus the model can be considered as a well trained but, but if your uh, loss graph comes as this and goes like this and this 
the rise in cost and increasing then uh, our model will not be well trained and now evaluation of our constructed model and train in the test data now let's see how uh, accurately our our uh, constructed model predicted on train in the test data now for train press we use the man max inverse scalar because uh, we scale it in the range of 0 to 1 and we uh, rescale or uh, do inverse transform uh, in order to get the get the closing price value uh, in original form so we uh, do these two steps and we uh, store it in the train press and the test press now from uh, we importing the um, uh, math library and imported the mean square error uh, and for calculating the mean square error we use the math that is square root this is we uh, just here evaluate the root mean square error not the mean square error we uh, computed the root uh, root mean square error by using the sqrt uh, for methods of our math library or math object here and we get the very good uh, uh, very considered as a low value this is considered as a low value uh, and uh, uh, for uh, training data um, it is uh, 132 for, uh, for our test it must be little bit um, high if it is low then our model will be overfitting also so just analyze this data for uh, identifying whether our model is uh, overfitting or not so I think it's a good result and now I plotted uh, our data sets you can see uh, we just predicted considering the first uh, 100, 100 values and predicted the 101th value so uh, we need to go we need to for aligning the predicted and actual on the same curve in this same curve uh, same curve we need to uh, look back to 100 we need to start uh, plotting uh, the train and the uh, train data sets from the 100 so the look back is 100 consider uh, this there is simple logic you can see that you can go through this and initially initially we plotted the actual value of closing price how the actual value varies look this is the variation of actual data sets after that we just plotted for the predicted train data set how our model predicted uh, does pre do uh, does or done prediction on our train data sets look the orange uh, in the uh, orange color line or the curve is our predicted train data set look this was the actual uh, data sets and variation of actual data sets but uh, our this this part from the 100 so this is the look back is equal to 100 from 100 our model started predicting and it predicted very 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 accurately i think look uh, the um, both curve uh, align in uh, almost uh, similar path so we can consider uh, our model as well trained model and uh, we also plotted uh, this for the um, uh, test test uh, uh, predicted test data sets now we can see the uh, graph of the variation of the predicted test data, data sets in green this is the green look our uh, and the light blue is the actual data set this is the trend data uh, variation of trend data sets which is very accurate and the green parts is also the is is the uh, uh, predicted and uh, tested data sets which is also very accurate since our model trained with the 100 data inputs and start predicting from 101 onwards i already explained about this so the orange starts from that is the orange means the trained data uh, to predicted trained data set it starts from uh, data index number 101th similar logic for the test data and similar logic this is the actual part and uh, in this uh, there is no prediction because it is the first 100 is used for the testing purposes or training purposes light blue is the actual closing price uh, orange is the prediction on the closing price made by our training data sets now let's visualize this overall graph in a single frame look how how it's how the variation goes on 
So this is the actual data sets and this is a, a actual versus prediction on train and versus the prediction on test graph. So you can see uh, our graph uh, looks very 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 uh, almost 99% similar. 99 not nine almost there are more than 90 percent similar in both the graph now our final step is forecasting for the future 100 days and sorry future 30 days first before doing that we need to first check our test data sets size this is the 611 so the test data sets consist the latest value so we consider uh, the first uh, last hundred that is 611 minus 100 that is from 511 to 6 to the 611 uh, will be the uh, given as the input to our model so that is the press input and um, it is received into the row matrix form in which our model is uh, trained then after that i have uh, i have converted uh, sorry i have uh, stored that uh, prayer input uh, into the convert into the list and uh, stored in the temp input this is uh, done because for uh, appending uh, the values in the list it will be easier so i so this will be illustrated why i have done this will be illustrated in illustrated in this step uh, i have done uh, i have gone through various uh, review various reviews and videos uh, before um, before uh, starting my tasks and i have found this code and i have gone uh, demonstrated for for the three days uh, next three days just for debugging and understanding how it is working this code was initially made for debugging and understanding you can use this code to understand how the length and the shape pairing and so on <coughs> Just by copying and pasting this code, you can uh, get uh, various uh, ideas how our model is predict doing prediction. So uh, this was the code I was initially made. And after simplifying this code, I have made my code this much smaller. Now, demonstrating the predictions for the next 30 days. Firstly, I created the empty uh, list which is uh, 30 days output and i is equal to 0 and for uh, next 30 days uh, the value of i will be so i keep the value of i is equal to less than 30 for 100 next 100 days uh, the value of i will be less than 100 similarly if length of the uh, temp input that is the, the list i have made is greater than 101 then we need to remove the no, remove the one value from the beginning in order to train our models in order to make predictions so for that i uh, slice our data system data list from the one uh, index to the last so that the its size will be the again 100 and our predictions uh, for our prediction we get the let, uh, getting the 100 100 uh, data at the press input which will be converted into the NP array and now uh, it is received into the row matrix form then after that uh, our um, uh, we done the prayer uh, sorry after that now we convert the our prayers input in the three dimensional form that is uh, need required for the uh, stack LSTM model for making prediction or for making uh, for data feeding to the fitting the data to the model so we uh, done this step and we take the bar is equal to zero so that there is no uh, uh, output of the progress of our neural network and we passing the model we predicted uh, we use model that predict in order to predict for the uh, press input and this is to run for the 30 times and uh, there will be the 30 output and uh, all the output will be uh, appended to our 30 days output list so we printed out our 30 days output list uh, this is not the not the value uh, which came first this uh, 
I have run twice so I get this value the first value starts from the 0 0.621 I think you can check it out so don't consider this as a, a your value at that time if it not appears uh, uh, it's okay that value will be starting from the 0 0.621 or something like that uh, you can check my repo on github repo for that uh, because I have uh, run this twice uh, so I get uh, these values now plotting the last 130 days closing price because we use the uh, first 100 last 100 days for uh, providing the for making the prediction for the 30 days and we get the 30 days output now we uh, combinedly plot our 130 days closing price graph look our uh, closing price graph will be this was the uh, used for the making the prediction and this this uh, line in the orange is our predicted graph our from this we can see that the graph is discontinuous and we can make the graph continuous look there is a discontinuity and we can make it continuous by appending both the both the output values this value and this value will if you will append then it will start from this and it will be continuous for that i did done this you can go through this it's very easy and after that i have uh, plotted and it's so it is on like it is on like it is uh, can be seen as continuous graph let's visualize it in the single frame previously it was this this was the discontinuous graph and after uh, appending we get the continuous graph like this and this is the part which is appended from here now uh, finally i have completed my second task successfully uh, thank you for everyone uh, who supported me and uh, thanks for watching this video thank you so much